Good morning, everyone, and welcome to worship on this beautiful, beautiful Sunday in August. I'm so glad that you're here to worship with us. And uh, first of all, I want to say thank you to all the many, many people who helped yesterday with the picnic. We had about 125 people at the picnic, and it was a wonderful, wonderful time. So thank you, especially to the Board of Parish Life for organizing it, for setting it up, for cooking all the burgers. It was really, 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 really great event. So thank you. Next Saturday, we have a golf outing coming up. And Brandy, or can you say anything, or Chris? Oh, there he is. Just come on up, Chris. Good morning. Um, so next Saturday is the, the Butcher Memorial Golf Outing. Uh, it's supposed to be a nice sunny day, so hopefully not three rain delays like last year. Uh, we're still looking for a few more groups. We have a great group uh, turnout so far, but if you're interested in playing, uh, please let me know. Today is the last day for sign-ups. You can see me, uh, go to our website or email me with your information, and I will get you signed up. We do have the um, Buffalo Wild Wings Challenge, which is you eat two hot wings, which is pretty funny. You get to tee off farther up. We have a photo booth. Um, the competitive group and the non-competitive group. So it's a lot of fun for all skill levels and hopefully we will have great weather. So thanks. Thank you so much, Chris, for organizing it. And the golf outing will be next Saturday. The information is on the bulletin on your left-hand side. And this Thursday, the women and the men are meeting for lunch. So if you would like to do this on Thursday, please also. Joe is up there as well. I know that means a little commercial or infomercial or invitation for choir. Go ahead. Invitation. Uh, this Wednesday night we'll start with the, uh, the men practicing for the men's sports and we'll sing at the end of the month. So any, any gentlemen who'd like to come and join us, we'll be at 7.30 until maybe 8.30 at the latest. Um, we'll be working on two pieces. You do not have to be a member of the choir in order to come out and sing. So any guys who'd like to come and join us, please do. Thank you so much. Choir is starting up again. Um, again, welcome to everybody, especially to our visitors, to our guests. I invite you all, please, to sign the pew pads, which should be at the end of each row. Please sign. Indicate your presence here. And if there are any other prayer requests you would like us to know about, so please also sign them in so that we can follow up with you. Our 10 o'clock um, order of worship is in the middle of the bulletin where the staples are. Now let us prepare in our hearts for the worship of God and listen to the prelude. And then our opening hymn is 498, Peace Like a River.
Good morning. morning. Please join me in the call to worship. Let us hear what God the Lord will speak. God will speak peace to the people. Let us worship our God who speaks to us in infinite ways. Let us hear what God the Lord will speak. Today and in all days, God speaks to us in infinite ways. Let us worship God. Please join me in the prayer of invocation. Lord God, sometimes the winds blow and the sea turns, and like the disciples in the boat, we are afraid. And you come walking to us on the waters of our fears. Help us take heart today. Help us hear you say to us, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. Give us such faith that we are like Peter. Ready to step out of the boat into our lives. Let us hear what we do in our God. The Lord will speak. Amen. And I invite all the children to come forward and everybody else who is young at heart, body, and spirit. And I saw some of you bought the backpacks. Yes, so if you have your backpack, bring it up as well. And if you don't, we love you also. Yes, we invited you to bring your backpacks. I don't have a backpack. I have a cute, wonderful, cute little computer bag, little, little advertising. Because going to work is like going to school. You just do it, huh? And I'm glad that you brought your backpacks. So, who is going to go into preschool for the first time? No. Sorry. <laughs> Good try. Good try, Colin. Who is going to go into preschool? Who is going to go into kindergarten? Ooh. Who is going to go, I make them use middle school for the first time? Ooh, who's going to go into high school for the first time? Great, and who is a senior? Yeah, with your backpack. I am so glad that you're all here. Come on in, give it. Come on in. So what we are going to do, I know for some of you, school is starting this week. For others, it will be next week. We want to bless you and your backpacks. If you bought your backpack or not, if you're going to preschool or if you're a senior or if somebody goes to college, we want to invite you all because I know it's sometimes a little nervous to have the unknown of what is going to be. Grade. Good for you. Third grade is a wonderful grade. You don't know who your teachers are yet. You don't know exactly what is all going to, who you're sitting next for lunch with. It's all going to be, all going to be new. I do. You do? I know my teachers. Are you a lucky girl? I am so glad you know who your teachers are. So let us share a blessing, and we have a bookmark for you, so you can put it into your backpack. And if you didn't bring your backpack, you can just take it home and put it in your book. And I'm sure you're going to have books in school. Don't you? So my prayers is for a the... Lot a lot of books, yeah. My prayers for those who are driving so that they're going to be nice and slow in the school zones. My prayers is also for all the teachers and the administrators, for all the parents who are going to send their kids off into the unknown and trust others to take care of their most precious belongings. Let us pray. Gracious, loving God, thank you. Thank you so much for your love. And thank you that we can learn. Thank you for the love of learning. 
and we ask your blessings upon the backpacks, but especially upon those who are carrying the backpacks, on all the students, all the children who are going to adventure into something unknown. Be with them, not only on the first day of school, but on all the days of school. Be with the parents, as some of them might shed some tears at the bus stop and the first time the, the child goes into a goes up the big, big steps into the yellow bus, and also for the administrations, for the teachers, for patience and for love. And we are so honored that we can constantly learn more about you, about your love, and we especially ask a prayer when we are nervous for tests, that you are going to be with us, giving us strength and courage, because you trust in us. In Jesus' name, amen. Pastor Jay and I have bookmarks for you. Scott, can you just pass the top one? They are right here. You may also get one. Here you go. There's a Bible verse on your bookmarks. I can do all things through him who gives me strength. May this Bible verse be especially helpful for you as you are going to have some tests or assignments to do. And as we are passing out those bookmarks, I invite all of you to share God's peace with one another. The children will stay here today in worship with us all, and children's worship and tweens worship will start back up in September. Did you get one? Did you have? the peace, I invite you to be seated so that we can share the joys and concerns of our congregation. And I am aware that we are running short of bookmarks. There will be more bookmarks available after the service. So we ask you please, there will be some more. They are printed right now. They will be available after the service. So thank you. I would like to share with you the joys and concerns of our congregation as far as we in the church office are aware of it. First of all, these beautiful flowers are given by Larry and Debbie Kelly to celebrate Case's eighth birthday. He is in Denver with his dad visiting his uncle Chris. And also news from the family while they're celebrating Case's birthday. Um, Case's great-grandmother passed away. Larry Kelly's mother, Helen, passed away August 12th at age 96. So please keep the Kelly family in your prayers as they celebrate both young life in age eight as well as the life 
of <coughs> Larry Kelly's mom, Helen. Speaking about young life, we have a baby in our midst. Ella is here. Uh, she's adorable, and so welcome, Kaya, welcome, Ella, and I'm so glad you brought her this morning. So uh, I don't know if we can all have a peek, because we all want to. Otherwise, <laughs> later on, later on. So I'm so glad that she is here right now. Please don't wake up a baby while she is sleeping. <laughs> if you look at the last page of our bulletin, you will see a couple of names. Um, news about Mike Cook, he had partial knee replacement on Thursday. He was better on Friday, not such a good day yesterday. So, continues prayers with the Cook family. And from Ann Summers, I've got a whole, whole long list here. Let me read to you. Good news is, Glenn turned 26 last Thursday. Prayers, please. This week, surgical procedure for Glenn. Next week... Tuesday, Jason at Cleveland Clinic for Spinal Surgery Evaluation. Pray, capital letters, pray for good news. Then Wednesday to Thursday, May and Joey at Children's for Overnight Infusion. Friday, May, surgery at Grand Hospital, outpatient. And last, pray for sanity for Anne throughout this. So yes, and you have got a really, really busy schedule right here. <clears throat> so I do not know how your calendar looks like with all these appointments, but definitely prayers for you as you um, go through all the medical appointments for <clears throat> your children. Speaking about <clears throat> excuse me, children, Brandon Udipole had a bike accident. He's got 10 stitches. Um, not a really good way to end the summer right now, but he is doing okay. Molly Holloway broke her foot. She has three little kids at home. She can't walk and she can't drive. So if you would like to reach out to the Hollowins, I'm sure they would appreciate that. Alan and Johnson, <clears throat> Alan Johnson and Rebecca Johnson, I would like to lift them up. Alan is in rehab after he fell, and Rebecca was in the hospital earlier this week, and I'm so glad to see that Rebecca is actually here this morning. Janie George asked for prayers for her son's mother-in-law, Vicky, who was in the ICU with a peacemaker. These are all the concerns, prayers I'm aware of of this congregation. And um, listening to the news, I would like to lift up especially the tension between North Korea right now. And we had people here at the earlier service whose daughter and son-in-law live in Guam. So they are very, very frightened right now. And especially also the violence in Charlottesville, Virginia. Um, prayers for peace. Prayers for peace in this country, in this nation. <clears throat> yeah, I want to follow up and I want to first of all lift up a joy that um, yesterday 125 people gathered for our annual church picnic. <clears throat> it was a great time. And I want to thank Parish Life, uh, Wendy Kennedy and her team. I want to yeah. thank you for a great, great time. Uh, that's, a, that's about 125 people and I think five dogs. <laughs> so it was, it, was, it was a great time. I, I want to follow up with Pastor Zigrid that um, during Joy's Concerns in both services, I wanted to lift up the concept of worry. Um, I'm very worried about a lot of what's going on in the world, and um, I don't think I'm alone. And in the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus says essentially, D transform your worry into prayer. So I want to lift up that, that that's what I'm trying to do every day. Uh, whenever the worries come to the conscious level, I'm asking God to transform those worries into prayer so that uh, the great peacemaker, Jesus Christ, may prevail. Thanks. Thanks. Any other of joys and concerns you would like to share? Carla. So prayers for Carla's son's friend who passed away 
and the family. It's, it's um, difficult. It's a difficult. 33. 33 years old. It's too much to worry. <coughs> Thank you. <coughs> Craig. Prayers for Ashley's family and Becky passed away. Thank you. <coughs> Tomorrow is a great day of celebration. Is Mary Rose's birthday? Yeah. Thank you. Good. Happy birthday, Mary. Tomorrow is the day. Tomorrow is the day. <laughs> and I see you brought your cousin here. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you for being here. <coughs> Happy wedding anniversary for the kisses. Prayers for Amanda's best friend's twins, born in July, they were due in September. Yeah. So, and uh, now they're three and a half pounds. It's wonderful. Good. I'd like to express a joy. Yesterday was Delaware County's So much, Pat, for walking with your family. Yesterday was a very important day for the Batemans. Thank you. <laughs> Did I get everybody? Yeah. Would you please pray with me? Gracious, loving God, in today's scripture reading, we read that Jesus walks on the water. We love the time when all is well, and life is like smooth sailing. However, sometimes the winds and the waves are very high. We are worried, frightened, afraid. Help us to place our trust in you during all these rough times. You call us to reach out take our focus off our own panic, and place our trust in your love. With your help, we can get out of the boat, make the first step into the unknown waters, and let us not take our eyes from you when we walk through unknown territories and take risks. Jesus, grasp our hands and hearts, heal and strengthen us with your love. Let us not panic but be confident that you are with us, that you reach out to us with your hand as we encounter all the high waves and the big storms in life. We lift up the people, the situations we mentioned out loud, and all those who in our thoughts, in minds and in hearts, would come to you in prayer. Together, as your children, let us pray the prayer you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our prayer hymn is number 450, Lord, speak to me.
opportunity to reflect on all the many blessings we have God has given to us and we are invited to share our talents and our treasures and it is a special honor for me now to introduce Anna Hidepo to you as she is going to share her talent with us her talent of her voice her mom and her sister are going to join us at the next class and and I'm so glad Anna thank you Thank you so much for sharing your talent and I'm already getting goosebumps because I know the song you're going to sing. Let us be generous in our hearts, hands and voices.
It's not a cry you hear at night. It's not someone who's seen the light. It's a cold and it's a broken. Hallelujah. 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 Anna, incoming sixth grader at Warner Spring. And I'm so glad that you are my neighbor. Give me a hug. <laughs> and there were many tears. I could see many people just wiping off their tears. Thank you so much, Anna. Let us pray. Gracious, loving God, thank you. Thank you that we can share our gifts with you in many, many ways. And we ask that you bless these gifts, especially when the seas are rough, the winds are high, and we do not know who to turn you. We know that in this community and with your help, we can master all different storms in life. Thank you for these blessings. And thank you. We ask that you are with all the people who are sharing their gifts and give a blessings to these gifts that they may be used in your service in this world. Amen.
Today's Old Testament reading comes from Psalm 85, verses 8 through 13. I will listen to what God the Lord will say. He promises peace to his people, his saints, but let them not return to folly. Surely his salvation is near those who fear him, that his glory may dwell in our land. Love and faithfulness meet together. Righteousness and peace kiss, kiss each other. Faithfulness springs forth from the earth, and righteousness looks down from heaven. The Lord will indeed give what is good, and our Lord will yield its harvest. Righteousness goes before him and prepares the way for his steps. Today's New Testament reading comes from Matthew chapter 14, verses 22 through 23. Immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to the other side, while he dismissed the crowd. After he had dismissed them, he went up on a mountainside by himself to pray. When everyone came, he was there alone. All right, let's try this again. <laughs> go. You can go all the way to 33. 33, okay. <laughs> all right, so apparently this goes through 33. Let's try this. Um, I thought that was too short. Uh, <laughs> all right, you know what? Let's just start over. Immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to the other side while he dismissed the crowd. After he had dismissed them, he went up on a mountainside by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone, but the boat was already a considerable distance from land, refuted by the waves because the wind was against it. During the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went out to them, walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and cried out in fear. But Jesus said immediately to them, Take courage, it is I. Don't be afraid. Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, he said. Then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water, and came towards Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid, and began to sink, cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You of little faith, he said. Why did you doubt? And, w and when they climbed into the boat, the wind died down. Then those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly you are the Son of God. Thank you. Thank you, Scott. Thank you so much. Anna and the Haltermans, thank you for those gifts. If you were here last week, maybe you remember that the lectionary passage was about the feeding of the 5,000. And our lectionary reading is what Scott just read for us today. And that's the reference to immediately he made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. The crowds Matthew's talking about are the crowds that were gathered for the feeding of the 5,000. Jesus dismisses the crowds he says, go ahead of me to the other side of the Sea of Galilee. And he goes up on a mountain to be alone again. Jesus needed time to pray. Evening falls. The boat is being battered about far from land, and the wind was against them. This is the first time in Matthew's Gospel that Jesus sends the disciples out without him. Apparently, he felt they were ready. And we're hearing today that maybe they didn't feel like they were ready. This is the first time in Matthew's Gospel that Jesus sends his disciples out without him physically present, just like you and me today. From ancient times, water has represented three things to humanity, the waters of life, the waters of chaos, and the waters of destruction. It is a paradox 
that not enough water, both not enough water and too much, can kill us. The Bible itself, the beginnings of the Judeo-Christian tradition, begin with the waters of chaos. In the second verse in the Bible, and I believe the best way to begin to understand how our Bible begins in Genesis, to understand the story of creation, is to think of how every day of our lives is a new day of creation, from the unconsciousness of sleep into the consciousness of a new day. Genesis says, In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep. We rise each day from the unconsciousness of sleep, from darkness, and we open our eyes. Darkness covered the face of the deep, and a wind from God, that Hebrew word ruah, which means the Holy Spirit. It's not just a wind, it's ruah. A ruah from God swept over the face of the waters, and God said, let there be light. And life begins when God creates order out of the chaos of water. Water is naturally linked with life because living things cannot survive without it. Rain makes plants grow, and you and I begin in water. Babies are generated by sperm, a form of water, and nourished on milk, a form of water, and the baby formed in the womb is lapped in waters which break at the baby's coming. Sap is the life of a tree, and blood is the life of people and animals. If we lose it, we die. What are we going to do when the chaotic waters of life fill us with fear? Matthew tells us it's early in the morning, it's dark, the wind is blowing, and it's not just windy, the wind is against them. How many uh, either runners or walkers or bike riders do we have here this morning? Yeah. We know the difference between walking with the wind and riding against the wind. And for the first time, Jesus sends these disciples out without him. And the wind, not only is it blowing, it is against them. It's early in the morning. They're scared. And Jesus comes walking toward them on the waters of chaos, the waters of fear, and the waters of potential destruction. Please hear this. The waters of life are often disguised as the waters of chaos. And one of the disciples, one of them, Peter, is about to exhibit the courage to step out of the boat into his life. To step out of the boat into his life. The disciples are terrified. They don't see Jesus. They don't recognize him because their eyes are dominated by fear. He comes to them showing power over the chaos of life. He comes to them in the latest and darkest part of the night. He is the one that has come to overcome the power of chaos. Something powerful and symbolic is about to happen. I have two lines of scripture circled in my bulletin this morning. From our Old Testament Psalm lectionary passage, what I have circle, circled is that portion of verse 10 that says righteousness and peace will kiss each other. I love that. Righteousness and peace will kiss each other. There is a connection. When the living spirit of Christ walks into our lives on the waters of chaos, righteousness and peace will kiss each other. And the second thing I have circled toward the end of Matthew, I will tell you in a moment, something powerful and symbolic is about to happen. In 1986, in many ways so long ago, in 1986, I shared with you last, it was the year after I graduated from seminary, I was looking for my first call, and I worked during the day from 7 a.m. to 3.30 as a concrete construction worker. Three nights a week, and the schedule would vary, three nights a week, uh, I had a job as an overnight on-call chaplain at two hospitals two hospitals in the city of Chicago, Children's Memorial Hospital, both located in Lincoln Park, 
Children's Hospital was right here. Grant Hospital, which closed in Chicago. I know we have a grant here. Grant Hospital in Chicago closed in 2008. They were on the same huge city block, not connected, slightly separated. And uh, the two hospitals had a joint program. Um, all the full-time chaplains got to go home at night. God bless them. And there were some of us that uh, were hired as part-time on-call overnight chaplains. And uh, you probably won't remember what these things were, but we carried these things called pagers. Remember those? They were about this big. We carried pagers. We basically had two duties overnight. We were up all night, and we had two things. We had to do pre-ops, pre-op visits, which meant if you were a patient at one of those hospitals and you had an operation scheduled the next day, it was the chaplain's duty to come to your room and ask you uh, if you would like a prayer. I did this for an entire year, three nights a week. Nobody ever turned down the opportunity for a prayer. We had to do pre-ops, and then we were on call for any, um, with all due respect with, to any MDs that are here this morning, um, there were no doctors in the hospital at 2 a.m. With all due respect, they were nurses that ran the show, and any nurse could call us for any reason. And in 1986, something new was coming in to our society, and people were afraid. And this new thing was called an AIDS epidemic. And I didn't know hardly anything about it. And I got a call one night, about 2 a.m., just about the time that Jesus started walking towards that boat, I got a call on my pager. I, when I had my pre-ops done, I. Uh, often I'd go to the chaplain's office. There was also something else in the 80s that these new inventions called Walkmans, remember? And uh, I would listen to things, books on, on my Walkman, and, and also uh, earlier in the day, where's Rick Dickinson? I'd listen to the Cubs, 1986. They won the Eastern Division. And um, I got a call on my pager. It went off, and this pager would give you the number of the unit where you were supposed to go. And something powerful and symbolic was about to happen, and it changed my life, and I wanted to change yours, and I've circled it in my bulletin this morning. I was in Children's Hospital, and I had to, you had to get out on the street, walk down the street, 2 a.m. to go to Grant. And there was, it was Friday night, and there was a jazz club, and it was summer, and the doors were open. And I heard this song, and every time I hear it now, I think of that night, uh, Kansas City. Kansas City, here I come. Da -da 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 I walked by and I looked in and there were people enjoying life. And I kept walking and I walked into Grant Hospital and I walked to the unit and the nurse said this to me. She said it in a very graceful, loving way. She said, we have a patient. It's a man. He's in his room alone. And he's dying of AIDS. He's dying of AIDS. And she said to me in a very calm voice, she said, if you touch him, please be sure and wash your hands. We just didn't know anything. And it was my duty and my honor and my calling. I didn't do it because I'm a saint, and Lord knows I'm not. I did it because it's what we're called to do. And I walked into his room, and what struck me at first was it was dark, and he was alone. And I walked to his side. And we chatted for a few moments. And I asked him if he would like a prayer. And he had called in and requested a prayer. And so, of course, he said yes. And something powerful and symbolic was about to happen. I held up my hand. And he held up his. And we prayed together. And I don't know if it changed him. I hope it did. But it changed me. And I want it to change you. And I want us to reach out to nations. And I want us to reach out to fellow Americans. And I want us to bring the peace and the love of Christ together. And we do it when powerful and symbolic things happen when we reach out and we touch each other. Something called Peter to step out of the safety of the boat 
And ironically, and maybe even darkly hilariously, the boat wasn't even safe at that time. Something called Peter to step out of the safety of his life, and he stepped out. And something called him to step out into the chaos of his life. And we all remember this story. Well, as long as he kept his eyes on the Christ, he was able to walk on the chaos of his Christ, on, on his life, and he was able to feel that connection the way that AIDS patient and I felt that connection. And as long as he kept his eyes on the Christ, and I heard the great UCC pastor Walter Brueggemann preach a sermon on this passage once, and if you've heard Walter, you know he's got a gravelly voice and a gravelly nature. And he preached this sermon to a bunch of UCC pastors. And when he came to this part of the sermon, he lifted his head and he looked at all of us and he pointed at us and he said, I suggest you stop looking at the wind. Stop looking at the wind. Look at the Christ and you will walk. And what I have circled in my bulletin this morning is when, G when Peter became afraid and he started to sink, what I have circled is this. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and he caught him. He caught him. It was a summer storm that Peter and his disciples, I'm sure, never forgot. He reached out his hand and he caught him. And I'm saying to me, and I'm saying to all who care to listen, stop looking at the wind. Let's keep our eyes on the Christ. And we reach out and we connect and we bring the peace and the grace of the great peacemaker, Jesus the Christ when righteousness and peace kiss each other, even and especially after the summer storms of our lives. Amen? Amen.
And so on this Sunday, when the lectionary calls us to remember that Jesus reached out and saved uh, Peter, I invite you now to reach out to someone near you and take their hand. This is our custom as we end each service this way, as in a moment we will sing our benediction together. And I invite all of us gathered here this morning, especially anyone new to us, please join us in our Coffee Fellowship time down the hall uh, at Co uh, Coffee Fellowship so that we may come together and celebrate this day in the name of Christ. Go forth now, having received the new life of Christ. Go forth remembering that we are called to walk any road we choose. And any road we choose, Christ will walk with us. And go forth always remembering to follow your dreams, not your fears. In the name of God, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen.